This is my review of the Quad Z2. Z2? Z2? Stand mount hi-fi speakers. And I know a lot of you have been really looking forward to this one and waiting for this one. So I'll try and get to the punchline for you really quickly. These are speakers that get a lot of things right, but not everything. <laughs> Deliberately leaving you hanging. And this is not an ordinary review, as this is speaker review number six from eight. Different stand mount speakers costing up to £2,000. I am comparing in a group test, and I will be comparing the Z2 to speakers one to five in the group test, and that is the Dyn Audio Evoke 20, the Sonos Faber Sonetto 2, the JBL 4309, the JBL HDI 1600, and the Arundel 1723 THX. With that long introduction out of the way, let's begin. The Quad Z2 cost £1,499. They are a two-way rear-ported at the bottom base reflex speaker with a very attractive and interesting curved cabinet that rises at its rear, and this for some strange reason reminds me of Winkle Pickers. The Z2 have a 175 mm or 6.9 inch woven Kevlar mid-base driver that interestingly has a double roll surround. Quad say helps to control edge breakup. Then the bit I'm sure most of you are most excited about, that is the 90 by 120 ribbon tweeter that Quad calls their true ribbon. The Z2 are 8 ohms, rated to 200 watts, with a low sensitivity of 84 decibels, something to be mindful of. And something else to be mindful of is the 3.4 kilohertz crossover, which is quite high, and I think that definitely plays a factor in how the Z2 sound, which we'll talk about in a minute. Setup proved to be a bit of a pig for a few reasons. Firstly, the Z2 come with some quite large rubber type feet installed on the bottom, and that meant I couldn't get them to sit nice on my speaker stands. One of the benefits of the Atacama Nexus speaker stands that I'm using is their modular design. So I had to change to a smaller top plate to allow the Z2 to sit on the top plate with it being inside the rubber feet. And that is not really a big deal, but just one of those things, if you already own speaker stands that you wouldn't want to change, well then naturally just measure to make sure the Z2 will sit nicely on top of them. The second thing that caught me out about the Z2 is I installed them, set them up, I did some measurements, and the whole time the sound from them just wasn't fully clicking for me. So I checked in with Quad about this and it turned out that I needed to remove the speaker port bunks. And interestingly, these fit in the port so tight and so snug, Trying to remove them felt like I potentially was damaging the speaker, which obviously I didn't want to do. So moral of the story is, if you buy these speakers, make sure you remove the port bunks because they sound significantly better when you do. Although, these do smell nice as a bonus. Once I found a good placement for the Z2 in terms of towing and time alignment, it was measurement time as part of a full Dirac Live calibration, and the results are really quite interesting. I think the first thing that leaps out at you is the big dip in the presence region. And this is a very different speaker design approach to several of the other speakers in this group test. I'm thinking the JBL 4309 and Arundel 1723 but it gives the Z2 an advantage in their imaging, which we'll talk about shortly. What's maybe not so good is the two peaks and undulations in the treble rising from about 12 kilohertz. And this was a little bit of a surprise to me. And I think based on these measurements, I would say the Z2 are speakers you will likely want to face fairly straight, probably not towed in too much, just as a recommended starting point to your setup. Then at the other end of things, the big surprise was the bass at about 50 to 60 hertz. And yes, that is right on a very powerful room mode that I have, but even so, it's big output compared to some of the other speakers in this group test. And the Z2 therefore should sound really punchy in their bass, although the reality is a little different. What you definitely can take from this is how well behaved the mid bass driver is before it starts to get too high in frequency, which is very interesting, and I'll mention why in the review conclusion. Comparing the Z2 to the JBL HDI 1600, these speakers are very different in their mid-range and treble delivery. You can see the JBL are more textbook, better behaved. They also have a presence region dip, but a much more subtle one. 
The JBL also have big outputs in the 50 to 60 hertz region, but not quite as much as the quad, but very similar, hold that thought. Comparing to the Sonos Faber Sonetto 2, you can see a very different speaker profile for bass and treble, with the quad having much more bass outputs, but the Sonos Faber having a better extended treble, which is impressive from a soft dome compared to the ribbon, but the ribbon has other sonic advantages. And I hope you enjoyed that basic technical explanation. But what do the Quad Z2, Z2 actually sound like? Well, let's start with one of their main strengths, and that is their soundstage. These are probably the best speakers so far in the group test for creating very tangible sonic images, or I suppose a sonic soundstage with very tangible floaty elements to the left and right of the speakers. The sound presentation is also very tall and present in the room for higher frequencies with a lot of musical ambience. There is very good upper frequency dynamics that stand out in the soundstage. And this is very different to the JBL HDI 1600 and I think more horn-like than they sound quite bizarrely. And I can tell that in a different room with a different hi-fi system that majors more on a go away from you type of sound, that I think the Z2 would do a very good disappearing act and that you would get a very nice look onto soundstage. And their second big strength is their bass. It's tight and rhythmic, but on the more subtle side, especially compared to, again, the JBL HDI 1600. And interestingly, I had to ask for a little more in the Dirac calibration to get the same perceived sense of bass presence, which possibly means the Z2's bass is a little cleaner than the JBL. And if you remember, in the HDI 1600 review, I said their bass was maybe just a little thick, and I could hear that about them straight away. I kind of felt the opposite with the Z2. And from this, I can say that the bass is more light-footed from the quad, and it's more you feel it and impactful from the JBL. And that means the Z2's bass is not as big and as solid and as hit you as the Dynaudio Evoque 20, and not as full and extended and effortless as the Arendelle 1723. So a subwoofer or subwoofers, plural, would be of benefit here, especially for the deeper bass. However, there definitely is enough bass where it counts for that all important warmth factor for the delivery of vocals. Big male vocals sound very masculine and very nicely tonally saturated. And this was one of the standout positive characteristics of the JBL HDI 1600 and the Z2 easily go toe to toe with them. And I actually think they resolve deeper, gruffer male vocals a little better than the JBL. And I'm thinking of the Whiskey and U track from Chris Stapleton that I've been using in my sound demos, the Z2 resolved those vocals a little more like the Sonus Faber Zanetto 2. So maybe Kevlar has similar traits to paper for mid-range drivers and the delivery of vocals. Then we have the treble from the ribbon tweeter. And it's a large ribbon tweeter that I think looks cool as hell. And you can hear straight away how fast and precise the ribbon delivers details. It has an ability to really project sound with great clarity, and it's a much more present treble delivery than a few of the other speakers here, such as again, the HDI 1600 and Evoke 20. So that is something to bear in mind when it comes to setup and system matching, as I think you could get it wrong, and the Z2 could sound bright, especially at louder volumes. But there are some really nice standout characteristics about how the ribbon sounds, but there is also something going on which I actually don't think is the tweeter, I actually think it's the mid bass driver, or maybe it's a little bit of both in the crossover region. Because I noticed with some music, and it was only with some music, there was just a little bit of roughness and a little bit of edginess coming through. And interestingly, it was in the music that you probably didn't expect it to be in, and it wasn't in the music that you maybe expected that it would be. And for example, the new Billie Eilish album, through the Quad C2, they could do the bass, they could do the dynamics really pretty well, but overall there was just a lack of smoothness and a bit of edginess to the music. And in stark contrast, I didn't get this from the JBL HDI 1600 or from the Arendelle 1723. In fact, this album sounded particularly good on the Arendelle. And there is also this sensation from the Z2 that vocals hang really nicely in space between the speakers and then there is nice space around them, but in some music the vocals are just a little bit too attacking and I'm thinking of the JS and Dara song, Television Girl. And this song is a little heavy and strong for vocals anyway, but it's even more so on the Z2.
to. And I'm definitely not a reviewer that likes to say, you know, this speaker would work well for classical or for jazz, purely because my brain just doesn't work that way. But I do think the Z2 would be very good for classical music because of their dynamics, top and bottom, and obviously because of their really excellent soundstage. I think what I am saying about them Kind of how we saw in the measurements, the Z2 do have a very strong character in the middle to upper mid-range region. And this might sound better for some music more than others, or maybe it's just a system synergy thing. And maybe using a less brutal, neutral hi-fi system than I am will sweeten the upper vocal range. And obviously you'll now be thinking of tube amplifiers and maybe even quad tube amplifiers, which makes sense, except there was almost a little bit of a paradox here because from the spec sheet, you think you need a lot of power with the Z2's low sensitivity of 84 decibels and 200 watt rating. And to get them to be really dynamic, you do need to feed them some power. But I actually think they are a speaker that's not really intended to be played really loud, hence the treble and bass response. I think they probably sound better when you don't go crazy with the volume, so do factor that in. And I am 100% an audiophile that favors and likes dynamics, and I would say that I am a greedy audiophile in that regard, which naturally makes me a volume cranker. And thinking about this group test, I would say that there are other speakers that I've looked at so far that are probably better for that type of audiophile, the one that really cranks the volume all the time, because other speakers seem to maintain their composure a little better at louder volumes, and probably stay smoother at louder volumes. And I am thinking of the Arendelle 1723, but they are a bit of an enigma in this group test. So to conclude, you do get a lot here with the Z2, nice, precise, and detailed treble, very good soundstage and overall presence of sound, sonic dimensionality, nice, tight, and punchy if you push it bass, very nicely saturated vocals in the main, and I think the shorter coming of the Z2 is possibly where the mid-bass driver is having to come up so much to meet the tweeter to cross over at 3.4 kilohertz. That is really asking a lot of the mid-bass driver to do. The Z2, they definitely look lovely, and I think they definitely have the waff, especially in this white finish. I think their strong sonic character will make them a hit for some audio files and maybe make them a miss for other audio files, but that is the whole point of it all. And that is definitely the whole point of a group test like this to try and help you shortlist the speakers that sound the most appealing to you. But obviously to go and listen to for yourself. And I'm definitely not making any conclusions or jumping to any final judgments as of yet because I've still got two very, very interesting speakers to review in the group test. And obviously I will be comparing and doing a sound demo between the Quad Z2 and the JBL HDI 1600, which will be coming soon. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button, show your appreciation, and maybe subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you.